Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to a new video. I just wanted to let you know before we start with this video that I already shot this one like three or four weeks ago and I also shot it before my original C490 launch video. That's why some of the information you already know. So please don't be confused that I said the same thing twice. Thanks and enjoy the video. I have two C490 boards already uh, in front of me on my table. I have the Maximus 12 Extreme and also the Maximus 12 Apex motherboard right here. You can see the Apex is already prepared with some liquid insulation around the socket, which means that I maybe played around with liquid nitrogen already. And once we are allowed to show performance data of the CPU, you will also see the liquid nitrogen extreme overclocking content from the Apex. Today, we will just take a quick look at the Maximus 12 Extreme, also quickly at the Apex. Apex doesn't have any kind of heat sinks on it, so I don't really know what the Apex looks like, but the Extreme is already here, retail state. We can take a closer look at this one, uh, take apart heat sink, look at the VRMs and all those kind of features. Starting off with a quick overview of the Maximus 12 Apex board, my go-to motherboard when it comes to LN2 overclocking, at least what I can judge from now, from my previous testing. You can directly notice the DIM.2 module on the right, which I also used for, for my initial testing. This time the Apex board also features a dedicated M.2 slot underneath the CPU socket. There is a PCI Express slot right next to it. I guess it's sharing lanes with this one, but I'm not sure because I don't have any kind of documentation at the moment for this board. There is also this typical cutout of the PCB on the right. What this was used for and what exactly it is, you will see later in my LN2 footage when it will be released for this board. On the right, we have the typical Apex buttons. Apart from start and reset, we have two reserved switches. You can see they're switched on because I used it for LN2 testing. It really works extremely smooth to use it for LN2 overclocking. And underneath, we have save and retry buttons, which are extremely helpful. If you're stuck in memory overclocking and debugging for retry, it will apply or reapply your current BIOS settings and will try to reboot with those previous settings. For the safe boot, it will just reset your BIOS setting. You can go to the BIOS and reconfigure your settings without losing them. Taking a closer look at the VRM, we can spot 16 inductors and power stages in total. Those are Infineon power stages and should be capable of 70 amps per power stage. And we have a teamed configuration right here. So we don't have 16 native phases, but we have eight native phases, which are teamed, AKA twin configuration. If you're not familiar with this wording, then you can look up a video I did um, about a year ago. You should find it in the description where you can, where you can learn more about a twin or a teamed configuration. On the IO shield, we have two times PS2 connectors. We have multiple USB. We have USB type C one times ethernet and audio solution. Nothing really spectacular, but that's something I guess that's normal for an Apex board. We have PS2 because we can still use PS2 with Windows XP nowadays, and that's used for many overclocking records, even with the 10900K. Before we continue with the Maximus 12 Extreme, a quick word about PCI Express 4.0. A lot of people asked if C490 will have PCI Express 4.0, and the quick answer is in theory yes, but it will not work. The CPUs don't feature PCI Express 4.0, but the boards and the traces are made for PCI Express 4.0. So theoretically they could do it, but as far as I know, the latest generation cannot do PCI Express 4.0, they can only do 3.0, but upcoming CPUs might feature it. And that's why those boards are already the way, built the way they are. So future CPUs should support it. And then you will probably have PCI Express 4.0 on those boards. I'm not sure if that's the case for all C490 boards, if they are all built the same way or if there are differences. No idea, but that's the information I have right at the moment. Time to take a closer look at the Maximus 12 Extreme. It looks extremely elegant from what I can judge right now. I didn't test it so far, so I have no idea which parts are RGB illuminated, but just looking at the board in the state it is right now with a lot of black anodized aluminum, really, really elegant look, a little bit of shiny aluminum coming through right here. Also on here, we have DIM.2. However, the DIM.2 modules, which are on this board right here, are sharing PCI Express lanes with the first 
graphics card slot, which means in case you want to occupy one or two M.2 modules inside a DIM.2 stick, then it's sharing lanes with a PCI Express slot and you're losing eight lanes down here, maximum eight lanes for the graphics card. Otherwise, you should just use the dedicated M.2 slot, which should sit underneath one of those heat sinks down there. Didn't open it yet, but we will take a closer look at this. Heat sink wise, it looks like it got a little bit more surface area than the previous generation. The heat sinks look absolutely massive. On the IO shield, we can find 10 times USB-A, two times USB-C, we have 10G LAN, we have 2.5G LAN, Wi-Fi on board and also audio solution, obviously. Therefore, I think the sport should be quite sufficient when it comes to the I.O. ports. Very similar to the Apex, we also have reserved switches right here and an LN2 mode. All those functions are meant for LN2 overclocking and should only be used for that. It can damage your board if you use it with ambient overclocking. And down there we also have the retry and safe boot switches. However, if you really want to go for liquid nitrogen overclocking, I would absolutely recommend to pick the Apex and not the Extreme. Obviously, we also have socket 1200 on C490, which means that 9900K and previous CPUs will not be compatible with C490. The increased pin count should be related to theoretically the higher power consumption of the 10900K, which is something I would assume. I'm not 100% sure. But from what I heard, it's also that the upcoming CPU generation after 10900K will have more PCI Express lanes and uh, therefore the additional pins are used for additional PCI Express lanes. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to say that or if that's even correct information, but we will see. The board comes with this massive aluminium plate which is meant to cool the two M.2 drives which are sitting underneath. Has quite some surface area with this right here. Should be sufficient when it comes to cooling. Now I spotted two pieces of aluminium which are connected with a heat pipe that's to cool the C490 chipset which is sitting underneath. You could assume that this kind of cooling block would also be connected to the one on top which is responsible for cooling the VRM. However, in between there is no heat pipe so it's just this small aluminium piece in the middle and the one on the bottom to cool the chipset passively. But I think C490 if it's following C390 should be quite cool when it comes to power consumption, therefore this should be sufficient for cooling. I just removed this backplate which comes with an LED strip on the side, just unplugged it. And we can also spot that it has some kind of cooling function. There are two thermal pads which are connecting the backside of the VRM cooling uh, with the backplate. Therefore this should help to dissipate some additional water to keep the VRM cool. On the left we had this aluminium shield on the audio solution, doesn't seem to have any kind of active purpose, more like a visual purpose. Then we also have this part right here, it looks like an OLED display, only for visual purpose as well, no cooling. And there we have the chipset cooler connected over a thermal pad to the C490 chipset. And it also has an additional active cooling right here. We see there are some thermal pads which are making contact with additional power stages. And those are the components which are cooled also by the chipset cooler. Could be additional voltage supply for the CPU like V, CCSA, IO, DMI, something in that direction. I'm not sure which power rails those exactly are. And here we have the VRM heatsink, everything made of solid aluminium, even this part right here, which makes it feel extremely high quality, also has some weight to it. We have plenty of surface area with those deep cuts 
through the massive aluminium parts right here. Also has very good amount of mass which should be capable of taking away sudden load spikes and then deep cuts into the heatsink to have plenty of surface area to eventually dissipate the heat. The VRM solution is very similar to the Apex board, however the power stages are a little bit higher grade. Also Infineon power stages, they can handle 90 amps per phase and we have again a team configuration, 16 phases paired up with two, which means that we have actually eight phases with two power stages per phase and they're now doubled again, they're teamed or twin solution. You can look that up in the previous video. Also here on the left we have the Tenchi LAN controller which is also cooled by the heatsink above. I also found in addition this USB Type-C or Thunderbolt 3 extension card in the box of the Maximus 12 Extreme. Comes with, as I said before, 2 times Thunderbolt 3 and 2 times mini display port. Could be interesting for some people. I also found this 40 millimeter fan in the package, which I'm not sure what it is for. It has this additional metal clamp thing, and I think it's supposed to go on top of the VRM cooler right here, or on top of the VRM cooling block. But I think it could make your board look a little bit ugly and I'm not sure if I would like to have one of those small fans running on top of my VRM block. I think it's better to get just an additional case fan and make sure you have proper ventilation to cool your VRMs instead of putting something like this on there. By the way, it's also not detailed in the manual what this fan is for. It's just in there in the box, but I have no idea what it is for. Apart from that, very good looking boards. I think power stage wise should be absolutely sufficient for what we can expect if we think of having a 9900K with two more cores, which I think it will be eventually. Uh, we will see how it turns out performance wise. I personally didn't do any benchmarks yet with the CPU when it comes to just comparison with other generations. That I'm, that's why I'm also not entirely sure. So much for this. Let me know what you think about those boards and also about this NDA. Thanks for joining in and see you next time. Bye.